Well, if a username and a password isn't enough, then we need to think about giving authentication based on something you might have. This is called two-factor authentication because you have to go through a couple of steps. You have to first know your username and password, and then you go to the second factor of authentication, which might be something like a biometric scan. You might have a fingerprint reader. You might have a retinal scan reader, or it might scan your hand to be able to tell if it's really you that needs access to this. A lot of organizations also use smart cards. These are usually built into your ID cards. There's a small chip inside of them. And a lot of the laptops and other devices have the way to plug in an adapter that can read these smart cards. So when you walk up to a computer, you not only have to provide your username and password, you have to slide your card into the computer so that it knows that you are the one who's there with that card. And there's also a way to do this uh, remotely with key fobs and security token generators. Here there are some that are pieces of hardware. And when you hit the button, it's a pseudo random number. I say pseudo random because the number is always changing. And you can't really predict the human mind anyway. You can't predict what the next number is. But it's using a standard algorithm. And on the other side where your server is, it also knows the algorithm. So it's synchronized with that key fob or with a piece of software you might be running on a mobile device. And that number is constantly changing every 15 seconds, every 30 seconds, every 60 seconds. And when you put in your username and password, you hit the button on your token generator. It'll give you a set of numbers. You type those numbers in, and that then gives you access in. That's your second form of authentication of your two factors. Another important security concern we should keep in mind is something called social engineering. Social engineering takes into account the human concept, the human idea of taking a person and getting around all of your firewalls, getting around all of your encryption, getting around all of your technology simply by talking to a person or accessing something a person might be doing or tricking a person into clicking on something on their screen they shouldn't be clicking on. We've got all these security controls in place. And here's something that has nothing to do with technology. Therefore, it's, it's a major threat. It's a major problem on these networks that we use today, especially since we can't detect it. It, has, it doesn't even go over the network. It's one person talking to another one. And it's become a, a major information source. This is a very, very common way. When, when very large organizations test their security, they very often will contract with a third party to also do some social engineering and see if they can get into the corporate network that way. Social engineering takes a lot of different forms. And it can happen at work. It can happen at home. There are certain things that you should keep in mind for social engineering. If somebody's calling you and saying, hi, this is Bob from the help desk. Uh, we have a ticket open for some people that are on your floor, and we're concerned about the network connection. Let's give your ID, your ID and password a shot. What's your username again? And what's your password? And what's your phone number? And where do you work? Well, somewhere in there, they just asked for your username and password. They now have access into your network. So you can't necessarily believe everybody who's calling you on the phone. You also don't want to watch for people that might be wandering around your place of work and they don't have a visitor badge on. They're not being uh, have anybody with them escorting them. You should have processes in place where people have to sign in. There must be badges on the door. You have to make sure people aren't getting around some of those, those ways that people get in. In the spy movies, they always dress up as the repairman. And they're walking in. That's actually a very good way to get in the door and start taking care of things from a security perspective without anyone knowing that you're there. Another good way to do it is door surfing. Oh, if you want to get into anybody's corporate environment and you don't have a badge, grab some donuts, grab a couple boxes of donuts and start walking in. You have food and it smells good. Oh, my hands are full. Could you get the door for me? People are more than happy to let the guy with the donuts in. So you want to be careful that the person with the donuts, check him for his badge, make sure you know who he is. You don't want strangers coming in. And that's a very easy way to do it. One thing that people are also doing is dumpster diving. Their dumpster is a, a brand name of a trash receptacle that you can usually find out on the back of a, a major organization. This is why we take all of the different types of, of uh, paper that we have. We, we make sure they're all shredded up so that nobody can read them because people will go into your garbage and they will pull out documents, in some cases, very, very sensitive documents. If you really also want to get through security in someone's network, leave a USB key in the parking lot that has a Trojan on it and a, a backdoor access into a computer or has some automated way or something on it that might cause someone to click on the programs that are on that, that USB drive. It's something that is a very easy way to get into environments. You have to watch out for these things. And people have to be trained to look for those pieces. 
Sometimes the easiest way to get information out of someone is just ask them. Their study that was done at InfoSecurity Europe, they do this every year, is they go to a train station and they ask somebody, hi, what's your password? If you give me your password, I'll give you some chocolate. People go, wow, really? Here's my password. <laughs> here's, here's when I was born. Here's my boss's password. There's chocolate involved. They're in. No problem there. They, in this last study that I was looking at, there were 576 people they asked. 61% of them gladly gave their date of birth for some chocolate. 21% of them handed off their password and said, oh, I know what my associate's password is too. Can I get a chocolate for their password as well? I, and some of them even said, I have access to the CEO's password if you can give me another piece of chocolate. So you want to also be careful. Social engineering takes on some very, very simple terms at times, whether it's chocolate, whether it's donuts. I'm seeing a trend here, aren't you? The way to get these passwords is really with sweets, it seems. You want to watch out for these things. You want to be sure the people in your environment are well-trained to handle these kinds of situations. There's almost always a corporate process in place when you get an odd phone call. Somebody's around, they're standing around, they don't have a visitor badge, you should ask them. Do you have a visitor badge? Who are you? Why are you here? What are you doing in my environment? This is something that everybody should feel obligated to do. You should be enabled in your environment to do these things. If you find a USB key lying around in the parking lot, if something looks unusual, it is unusual. It's not normal, and you should take very careful precautions because once somebody is in your corporate network, all of those secrets go out the door. At the end of the day, all your organization has is that data. And as soon as someone else gets their hand on that data, it can be big problems for everybody in the organization. Let's see what we can remember about our security fundamentals. Our first question is, what kind of authentication uses something you own, such as a smart card? Well, that would be our two-factor authentication where we've had to put in our username, our password, and that second piece of information. What kind of issue might be related to an unattended visitor in a secure area? You find somebody walking around, and he looks like he's the repair guy, and he's asking people where to find certain things. There could be some social engineering going on. And the last question is, what's the best way to remove data from a hard drive? Well, there's a couple of best ways, but if you secure, delete it, or you destroy that drive, nobody's getting anything back off of that hard drive. Well, that covers everything we need to know for our CompTIA A plus 22701 section 5.1. We've gone through encryption and hard drive security and software firewalls and much more. If you'd like to see any of our A plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.